A big story out of West Virginia. We're learning more information about allegations and a potential new lawsuit against the West Virginia State Police is now bringing the total of 66, 67 members, 18 new, new women joining the lawsuit. Of course, the allegations against the state police that an employee hit a video camera in the women's locker room at the state police facility there. We're going to be joined now by attorney out of uh, Pittsburgh, Jason Matzis. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. This is a very big deal. Can you give us a little bit of breakdown on what we know so far, what's kind of entailing in this lawsuit, and why this is such a big deal? Certainly, Andy, and thank you for having me. Uh, as you appreciate, this is an evolving story, and many of the details remain unknown. However, allegations that have been made are very serious, and very shocking and disturbing. Women were allegedly subjected to derelict and deplorable conduct, such as sexual assault, physical assault. Women and underage teenage girls were videoed by hidden cameras in the police academy training facility. And there was a cover up that allowed the predators and abusers to continue exploiting these individuals and per governor justice at least one police officer was involved in the destruction of evidence the thumb drive on which the video from the police academy training facility was stored so these are certainly very very serious allegations they lead to a variety of different types of causes of action both common law causes of action and statutory causes of action uh, and for example depending on whether or not the video of the teenage girls any images from that video or the video itself was shared uh, by the individual that made it with other people and whether those other people shared it with others you may get into child pornography charges both state and federal which obviously as you appreciate very serious crimes that until very serious penalties as they should yeah so absolutely. this is a very very serious situation and yep. certainly an up chapter uh in the west virginia state police history yeah and that's Please. just based upon what we know now Correct. Yeah. And, and like you said, a very developing situation, very fluid situation. But it also stems from an investigation, like you mentioned, the governor there of West Virginia kind of moving forward with the investigation of this. I want to put up just a graphic here on Live Now from Fox. As like you mentioned, uh, five of the women claim were minors. They attended the junior trooper camp. Of course, the taping of the females did not end until 2020. Of course, they're also a superintendent there resigning from this. There's an investigation within uh, the state police department. Maybe how much do those overlap? The investigation made there by Jim Justice, the governor, but also uh, this lawsuit that's taking place as uh, soon. Well, hopefully the, the lawyers as well as the victims involved in any civil lawsuits will be greatly aided by the investigation conducted and insta instigated by Governor Justice when he became aware of these serious allegations. Oftentimes, you operate on parallel tracks, Andy. You have various state agencies and maybe federal agencies performing investigations, and then you, as the lawyer representing the victims in the civil cases, are simultaneously performing your own investigation. But there is significant overlap involved in the two investigations. One ultimately, deals with more criminally culpable conduct, whereas the other just deals with the civil consequences of the behavior. And I, I think a big part of this also, we heard from the governor there in West Virginia, Jim Justice, talking about that. He's saying, quote, we don't need to turn our back on on the whole because the bad actors are the few. Certainly this might hurt the trust factor for West Virginia and the state police department. How, how much maybe is that a factor, just the reputation of the state police on as a whole for the public? Well, it's very significant. And I think, as you mentioned, and as Governor Justice alluded to, it's important to recognize all the dedicated and committed police officers in West Virginia who are no doubt as repulsed by these allegations as the rest of us. 
you know, it's sad that their good reputations and the good work they do day in, day out may be tarnished by some bad actors. In my experience, Andy, the good officers want the bad officers gone at times even more than the rest of us because it tarnishes their reputation. It jeopardizes the commitment they've made to serve the public for all of our benefit. And I think Governor Justice really was pitch perfect earlier uh, in, in some of his remarks when he said, look, in these situations, you never know where the investigation will lead. Maybe some of the evidence and some of the information will be lost due to time or circumstances. But Governor Justice is exactly right in saying you must try. In essence, you must investigate because we're better than this. We should expect more from these individuals. They're held in a position of public trust. We should expect more from them and we owe it to the public and we owe it to the West Virginia State Police to conduct a thorough and comprehensive investigation. The investigators need to follow the evidence and follow the facts wherever it may lead and however high up it may go. The complete truth must be, be brought into the light. They owe it to the public. They owe it to the West Virginia police institutionally. You know, all the bad actors, Andy, need to be held accountable. Obviously, you can't go back in time in these situations and unwind what, what occurred. So it's all the more critical that there are real consequences if these claims are proved. It's the only way reform will occur, and candidly, it's the only way to remove the dark and ugly cloud and prevent it from turning into a permanent stain on the West Virginia State Police. All right. Jason DeMatsis, thank you so much for joining us, providing some insight into this very complex and a fluid situation. We appreciate your time here on Live Now from Fox. Certainly a tough story there, the lawsuit expected to be filed from these 67 women. We appreciate your time here, as always, on Live Now. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for having me.